All right, so now that you've kind of got your head in what we're talking about today, I want to get into it. Last class, um, we talked a lot about eating disorders, and I wanted you to have a firm understanding of the different kinds of eating disorders because what I'm going to talk about today to end our discussion of exercise addiction will kind of harken back, refer back to some of that eating disorder information I shared last class. So it's important to have a good idea in your head about how eating disorders work and what the symptoms are and the criteria and so forth. Um, so I want to talk now about behavioral addictions and then where exercise dependence fits in there. So in the DSM-5, the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, you can see my dog back here is rolling around having fun. So that's for your enjoyment to watch, if that makes you happy to watch. Happy animals. Um, DSM-5 added a category known as behavioral addictions, behavioral addictions. So this was meant to um, distinguish these types of addictive patterns from traditional substance use and alcohol addiction. Um, and the way that the DSM identified this type of addiction is um, really to, to think of it as a new classification of non-substance related addictions that involve behaviors that are nonetheless problematic in a variety of ways. At the present time, though, gambling is the only um, technically recognized behavioral addiction in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual. Having said that, in the DSM-5, the folks who wrote it, the experts who wrote it, the clinicians who wrote it, indicated that other behaviors, including exercise and internet gaming use and sex, we've talked about sex addiction, we're finishing our discussion of exercise addiction today, and the last thing we're going to talk about next week, our last week of class, is internet and gaming and other forms of social media addiction and some of the controversies surrounding that. So in the DSM-5, although gambling is the only behavioral addiction that is technically fully recognized as a diagnosis, the folks who um, compiled the DSM-5, the clinicians who worked on it, indicated that these other forms of behavioral patterns, such as exercise, internet and gaming, and sex, may potentially be included in this category of behavioral addictions in the future, which means the DSM-6 is coming, but more research is needed to determine whether they too would qualify under certain circumstances as forms of behavioral addiction. Now, of all of those different forms of potential behavioral addiction for future inclusion, exercise is one behavior that has been very widely studied as a type of behavioral addiction pattern. As you know from our discussion in the prior few classes, exercise dependence, sometimes abbreviated EXD, so when you see that from now on in the slides, that is exercise dependence, that's the acronym. Just to get your head back into it, is defined as exercise-specific attitudes and behaviors that result in physical, psychological, and or social, social. Here we go, guys. Just like last class, I'm going to start coining my own words. And social detriments, right? So, and typically across more than one of these categories. So I want you to keep that in mind as we talk in class today in terms of what we mean by exercise dependence. And I will meet you on the next slide. Catch you there.